our relationship with technology does not have to be painful and can be harmonious. So I believe there will actually be a harmonious balance between how average people and how business people interact and connect. But I also think the uh, impact socially and the ability to really uplift some of the most remote and uh, challenged areas. I think that there's huge opportunity. Honestly, that's the stuff that, that gives me goosebumps as, as far that, that when you really start to see the difference that it can actually bring. Talked a lot about the positives of AI. I mm -hmm. want to talk about what is scaring people <laughs> yeah. with AI. So there is a concern that AI will become aware and that we may lose control of it. Uh, and the second, I think, big negative uh, discussed is uh, the, the speculation that job losses will be. I've heard so many figures. I've heard that 50% of jobs are gonna be gone by 230, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 2030, and that 99% may be gone by you know, a, another 10 years after that. Those two things. Uh, yeah. I think one of them, certainly in terms of, uh, are we at a point where we can AI can actually become aware and we can lose control? It's a tough question and it's a legitimate question. I think that fear motivates people, but uh, I think that much like in the dot-com era, there was a lot of fear, if you, were, if you recall, in the dot-com era and how things would change. And a lot of what the internet was used for at the beginning time was not good. I think there needs to be a global standard and alignment. And I think it's going to come. I think that that is an inevitable. So I have a bit of faith in that process. I, I, I'm not going to claim to have all the answers, but I do believe that there's an opportunity that AI can be harnessed for good. One of the things that I like about Vosin is that we have an, a responsible framework. Like the, It's not a tool that's creating some fake version of something. It's an experience layer and we're able to effectively or responsibly manage how it's used. What we consume now in three months is more than someone in the 50s would have consumed in, in a lifetime. So change is not, it, and it's accelerating. It's scary because we, nobody, I, I don't think anybody can put it into a box right now. But, um, you know, we, we're driving it and I think that... Uh, but I do think the real answer is going to be that global collaboration, much like what came through the W3 sort of standards. So is, is there enough regulation around it? Do you fear that, they will, that uh, governments will start to impose much heavier regulations? Well, you know, I think legitimately, and I would be on that side, sometimes there's concern with everything church and state and sort of like control mechanisms and freedom. But I think there needs to be responsible mechanisms and I think logic will prevail. So I have fears on both sides. I have fears of overstepping. Okay, I don't, you know, everybody doesn't want Big Brother watching every second of every minute. Or the good thing is most people aren't going to be uh, important enough to watch every second of every minute. <laughs> but th those kind of concerns can come in. I'm actually, personally, I'm more concerned about the government application. Like, will governments embrace it properly? Because they, they have the power to influence change. I believe logic will prevail. I have faith that, that that seems to, in any transformation, we do find our footing. Hopefully, there's more people that are driving responsible frameworks, that they're not waiting for legislation to come into place. And I think the governments are struggling because it's moving faster than they're designed to respond to. And in terms of uh, the increase in productivity may uh, also lead to yes, less human need and job losses. Uh, how do you foresee that evolving? Look, our team, as an example, we're in the space, okay? Unprecedented. We, our first hire was July 2023. We have over 750 people in 20 different time zones as a startup. That wouldn't have happened at any time in the last 20 years. Okay, so I think for every story, there's a counter story. It's a shift. It's, it, I think we need to we need lead to, need to lead into it. We need to be responsible. We need to have standards. We need to have values, and we need to be looking for solutions. We're all grappling with it now. I think it's new still to most uh, industries, and we're trying to figure out how to use it. We're going to learn, and mm -hmm. we're going to start applying it in a much faster pace. So, what is the world going to look like? in 2030 <laughs> and what is the world going to look like in 2035 because i think these are five-year increments if not even less where things are just going to exponentially change 
I think that's a fascinating question, to be honest with you. Um, I can't profess to be able to look into a crystal ball, but I will share with you a couple of dramatic things that I think will be fundamental changes. One is I actually really believe that we'll enter into a screenless environment where it's not going to be people stuck on their phones and and it's not the glasses. I, I see as an example, uh, you know, screen empowered contact lenses where you could have multi-state and we can connect and how it interacts. It becomes just a part of how we connect with technology. Another is, uh, you know, I believe language preservation, restoration, and 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 language barriers. Uh, like I think you'll see enhancements in language preservation. I think you'll see rejuvenation. Like there, I know uh, in Canada there's Aboriginals that are trying to regain. Going to bring language. the Dutch language back. Yeah, they'll bring back <laughs> aspects of dialects that will compound and will help restore even uh, people that are passionate about preserving something that maybe they've lost touch with. But I would also say that our experience. And certainly even, and this is bias because of our platform is sort of centered around this, but I believe that we're going to have less multi-device friction and we're going to actually, it's become standard and normal, but it actually is painful. Multiple tabs, doing all of, and I believe that we'll see a very simplified fluid, which I think will have like almost like an emotional value or an EQ that our relationship with technology does not have to be painful and can be harmonious. So I believe there will actually be a harmonious balance between how average people and how business people interact and connect that I think will be remarkable. And that's the, the part at least that I'm excited to see. But I also think the um, impact socially and the ability to really uplift some of the most remote and uh, challenged areas. I think that there's huge opportunity in sharing knowledge and and uh, like honestly, that's the stuff that that gives me goosebumps. As as far that that when you really start to see the difference that it can actually bring uh, to some of these places. Okay, well, Brian, I really thank you, and I'm sorry if we've grabbed you during your busy schedule, but it's be been here. a fascinating conversation. And uh, we could follow you more on your website because you have content Absolutely. on there. Absolutely. Look, you can sign up um, to get sort of early access um, uh, through our website. And if you'd like to find out more, uh, certainly follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, we're coming out of stealth mode uh, on this roadshow, six country roadshow. So I think you'll be hearing more and more about Vosin and what we're doing. And our commitments are grounded. And uh, please uh, follow us join, get on the waiting list, uh, you know, but uh, just remember the more you give, the more you get. So just just try to embrace AI for, for good and, and find ways to bring value to your business, to your home, hold the standards high, uh, you know, don't let it paralyze you, be part of it. And that would be my parting words. And I appreciate the time. I really okay. do. This has been Anthony Galliano for B2B with a very special interview uh, with Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Voicing, uh, which has had a great chat about AI.